Okay, welcome back to the Audulous Module Library tutorial. This is 2.4, Converting Modulation to Octave Signal. As always, I'll read the patch and we'll talk about it afterwards. So, the modulation to octave converter takes a 0 to 1 modulation signal and multiplies it by up to 10, then offsets it by a range of negative 5 to positive 5. The output is uh, clamped between negative 5 and 5, which means it will never output values outside of that range. If we go down here, we see this is the range control and the offset control. Here it's set to 1, which means the incoming modulation signal will cover 1 octave. If it's set to 0.5, it will cover half an octave. 1.5, it will cover 1 and a half octaves. 2, 2 octaves. 3, 3 octaves. 4, 4 octaves. Easy to remember, right? So here are the offset you can think of as the lowest note that it can play. So if it has an offset of zero, that means there's no change. And that we, we know that uh, the octave signal of zero is the reference pitch, which equals A equals 440. Uh, so that is the lowest note that you can play. If it's negative one, then that's one octave below middle A, which is A3. And then negative two is two octaves below A4, which is a2. That would be the lowest note that you can play. Uh, you can, of course, go higher. You can go up half an octave, up an octave, two octaves, whatever. But it's important to remember that the offset is the lowest note that you can play, and the range is the range that your modulation signal covers, whether it's less than an octave or multiple octaves. Okay? So we go down here. The random generator tile creates a stream of random values between 0 and 1, a modulation signal. So. This is the random gen uh, mod, uh, tile here, and the output here. We can see this is zero right here and one right here. You will see changes happening in this meter that aren't reflected by a change in pitch. You'll hear that in a second when I turn the volume up. Uh, this just means that the change wasn't great enough to shift up or down a note, okay? So because we're running through a quantizer here, the, there might be only a few hundredths of a value uh, difference between those two, and it won't re be reflected in the quantizer. You can tell like little tiny shifts in value like this one right here. Uh, you might not hear those, okay? So, uh, for example, if you want to input, uh, if you want your input modulation range to cover the notes A2 to A5, the settings of the mod to oct module would be uh, times three, and we set that up to times three there, close enough, uh, and negative two, okay? And often when you're using a quantizer, you don't have to be super exact to the hundredth place. The quantizer kind of takes care of that for you. A2 to A5 covers three octaves, and A2 is shifted down two octaves from A4, right? So we have three octaves that this uh, will cover, and it's shifted down two octaves from A4, meaning that's the lowest note that it will play, okay? Uh, again, you don't have to remember all of this. Just know that this modulation to octave converter module will take a modulation signal created by sequencers, LFOs, or random sources like this one, uh, and turn it into a useful pitch range to work with. If you don't use one, you'll be stuck with a modulation that only plays notes within one octave starting at middle A. So you can see how this is useful if you always were just plugging in the modulation signal to the octave input of a, of a oscillator. You would only have that range between middle A and A5, right? You want to be able to expand that range, and this module is what allows you to do that. So we'll turn the volume up. So we're bringing it back up, and now it's covering three octaves, but starting at middle A. You can reduce the range that it's covering back down to one. Okay. So this is the same as if I just skipped this. Oops, ah, didn't skip the quantizer. If I skip the converter, it's the same. Sounds the same, but now if I shift it down, couple octaves. So that's the lowest note it'll play. Now it's playing one octave of notes here, but starting at uh, this two octaves down from the root note. Now we can expand the range that it's covering. So now it's covering two octaves of range, right? Going back up to two and a half octaves of range. 
Okay. And again, if I skip this module by taking this output and putting it here, you see how you don't have the same bass notes that are appearing as you do before. Okay. So you don't have to remember all of this. This will just come in time. It'll kind of sink in as you as you begin to use these these modules. The important thing to just remember is that you use this module, the mod to oct, whether you use the excuse me the module version or the tile version, uh, to translate the signals that are created by sequencers and things like this to control your uh, uh, VCOs. Uh, and this, this allows you to kind of tune where the, the, the pitch range that you're working with. So if you're using, for example, you're using a sequencer and it's, it's not very useful if the whole, the whole slider in the sequencer covers all of the possible notes, then it makes it really hard to dial in exactly which note you want. But if you know, okay, this sequence is only going to cover one and a half octaves, right? And it's gonna start on this note. So you, you scale that with the mod to oct uh, converter and then you have the entire width of that slider to work with. Whereas if you were, uh, if you didn't have this and it was just covering this whole octave range, your, your whole sequence might be in this little tiny range in the middle that, that would be really tough to really uh, accurately dial in things. So this makes that easier, it expands your ability to control uh, the sequencer, which we'll see on the next patch. And so I'll see you on that one. We'll learn more about how to use uh, octave signals with sequencers. Okay, thanks.